Thursday, everybody. We're going to give everybody a chance to log on. Facebook always, if you've never gone live before, it says, we're live and we're building an audience for you. So this is my, this is my small talk section of the video where I waste some time and <laughs> smile for the camera and wait for other people to show up. So... <laughs> Uh, real quick though, I'll kind of talk about where the inspiration for this comes from. Yesterday, if you saw some of the pictures that we posted, um, I think we created a, a brand new album and, and they're also all on Instagram, but yesterday we had about 16 kids here in the studio and we did Shibori, which is a Japanese, um, it's a real ancient art of dyeing fabrics using indigo dye. So it uses a, a natural dye. So we use true indigo. Um, which we dissolved into water using a reduction agent and we used some soda ash. Um, we learned that it starts out a yellowish green and then oxidizes to that deep dark blue after it's been dyed and so I think we left with only just a couple kiddos that had uh, blue fingers but, um, but everybody else did okay and they got to come in and dye up to three things that they brought from home and we learned a couple different binding and twisting methods to, to leave certain patterns on the fabric. So, so that was our fiber arts day. And I thought because we spent all of yesterday doing fiber arts, it might be fun to do some fiber arts with you guys today. So all week long over winter break, I have been coming to you live at 11 a.m. and doing some different ideas uh, that, that you can do at home with your kiddos over break and uh, I'm trying to use stuff that you're gonna have laying around the house. So uh, so no, no shibori tie-dye today for me because I figure most of you don't have indigo dye laying around. So I was gonna show you some fiber arts using some stuff um, that you have around. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. First of all, if you don't know me, my name is Allison Jensen and I am the owner of Orange Easel School of Art. If I get interrupted, it's because I've got a camp going on in this classroom, and then I've got um, our Moms Morning Out program going, going out and down the hall. So the studio is kind of buzzing. I actually, I went to all the classrooms and said, I'm gonna go live on Facebook. Do you need anything before I go live? So, so we'll see if anybody needs anything from me. But otherwise, there's one. <laughs> She's good though. Um, otherwise, hopefully we're not interrupted, but if, if we are and I have to run away, that's where I went, I promise. Okay. You're going to need a couple things today, and we're going to be using cardboard, so a piece of cardboard, cut up one of those Amazon boxes that you've got, um, and I've got mine cut just to about a size of, uh, gosh, what's this, like 9 by 12-ish. You're going to need some yarn or some fabric scraps. You can cut up old clothes that don't fit anymore into strips. You can use, um, you know, just any kind of scrap, yarn, string, ribbon, even, that you have laying around. I have a giant bucket here um, of different things that we've got. Anything that's fiber-ish, you can use. You can even use some pieces of paper that end up being, you know, very fiber-like. So you're gonna need that, and then um, obviously a pair of scissors. So we're gonna do a, a, a weaving project, and if you are, um, if you're like me and you are one of those people that follow a bunch of artists on Instagram, there are some wonderful contemporary fiber artists on Instagram who have been doing these beautiful wall hangings that are very kind of bohemian um, styled. They've got a weaving section at the top and they're usually draped on like a stick and then there's a weaving section of all different colors and then these, these flowing textural like tassels and fabrics and ribbons and strings that that come down and they're at different levels um, and they're all different colors and they they hang down um, and they they hang on the wall hi babes what's up oh is that my lunch thank you sweetie you can just set it there thanks bud so I, we're gonna make something kind of inspired by that project today um, and we're gonna do it using a cardboard loom and all our different fabrics and scraps that we've got. And then I've even got um, tutorials on how to make some fun little pom-poms or tassels to hang from you know, the bottom of your wall hanging. So your first step, of course, is to make your loom. And so with your cardboard, 
The first thing you're gonna do is cut slits all the way across the top. Now, um, we, I believe, measured this actually, but you don't have to measure. It's not that big of a deal. All the way across the top, all the way across the bottom, and that's just gonna hold the string in place. Now, we did it really, really simple in ours. You can see we started down here and we ended um, over here. It's not even taped into place. It's just wedged into that slit. We took one piece of string, just this brown string, and wrapped it all the way around our loom. So that way we have our vertical strings to hold all of the weaving in place. If you wanted variety from each one of these, the cardboard is usually strong enough, like ours is a pretty thick cardboard. Yours probably is too if you cut up an Amazon box. It's going to be a corrugated cardboard that you probably can do instead of one piece that wraps all the way around, you can cut a strip, wedge it in between here, and then wedge it in the bottom, and then cut something different, say a different color or a different piece of fabric, wedge it in here, stick it in here, so that every single one of these vertical strings is something different if you wanted to. Um, this is just a simple loom that, that we made, so ours is all the same. I'm going to put it a little closer to the camera, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, you can see I already started weaving, so I wove, um, this is a yarn, followed by, this is actually a piece of fabric that I cut into a strip. This one's kind of a fuzzy yarn. Um, this one here, that's this stuff. Isn't that funny? Um, and, then, and then there's another yarn down here. Uh, if you're using fabric, so this was the, the fabric that I, I wove in here. This is just a cotton fabric. I cut it into a little bit smaller than this piece, a little bit thinner and it's an over under over under technique which is great for kids to practice um, and pulling it through and then pushing it up into the loom. Uh, you can also, if you don't want to have to cut this, you can, oops I gotta move back so you can see what I'm doing. You can actually do a little bit of just rolling and folding. If you wanted to get out the iron, you could get out the iron and iron that and then weave it in there. The ends of ours, as I wove, I tucked them in and kind of hid them with the exception of this one that I need to still weave back in there. Um, you can also leave them hanging off the side and you can knot them and leave them hanging off the side um, so that you can make your, your wall hanging. Color wise, this is a great design project for kids is to decide, you know, how, how you're going to lay out your colors, what your color scheme is going to be, um, and then also maybe what, um, you know, how big each band is going to be. So my white band is a little bit thicker um, than, you know, like this top band up here. You can also do textural things before you put them in here. So for instance, this was going to be my next layer and I, I ran out of time, but I used a, a yellow piece of yarn, a golden piece, and I actually made like a, a crochet chain out of it. Or if your kids know how to braid, they can pre-braid it and then weave it into your, into your loom. Um, there is a lot going on here in terms of texture and color and design that, um, that we're working on when we work on a, a tapestry like this. Now, the finishing of this, you can, you can go all the way through the loom and you know all the way to the bottom and leave it right here on the loom and be good with it. Uh, and then this is your finished piece. You can finish the, the loom part, the cardboard, with paint, or you can, um, you can actually cut a mat for it and leave it right on here as opposed to trying to take it off. You can also take um, on your last row and knot it all the way across so that way it doesn't unravel. And then when you cut across the back, the top part becomes what you would hang from, and then the bottom part you can trim off. Um, or you can leave it hanging down like those, those tassels that I talked about from, from the different wall hangings. Um, I do want to show you how to make these fun pom-poms because not only are they fun in kind of this, this weaving thing, but they're also just, they're fun to know how to make for different craft projects. So, um, my little pom-pom. You can buy pom-pom makers. So if you have a kid who loves making pom-poms, um, I'm going to show you a way to do it without buying anything, just by using our fingers and a pair of scissors. But, um, but if you really get into this, um, you have a, you know, like a 13-year-old or a 12-year-old who likes to make pom-poms, you can make them in all different sizes. They have, um, they have actual um, devices that make it even easier for you um, to wrap and make these nice and full little pom-poms.
tassels, okay? All right, so let me show you how to make one. I think I'm gonna use my yellow string because I, um, I'm afraid that the dark strings you won't be able to see because there's so many, many shadows going on. So let me clear off my area here. I like yarn for pom-poms. I think it works the best. And like I said, there you could probably watch a YouTube tutorial on this um, and everybody's gonna have a different way of doing it, but this is the way that I make them and, um, and it works for me. So you need two fingers and a whole bunch of yarn. Um, you're gonna leave a tail out. I'm gonna hold it with my thumb because I'm gonna need it later. I'm gonna keep my fingers apart because I need room in between to knot it in the middle. And if I wrap my fingers together like this, I can't get in between it. It's like tying a balloon, you know, where you have to make the balloon tail pass through your fingers, same kind of thing. So I'm gonna hold onto it. I'm gonna wrap my fingers. I'm gonna go about 50 times, okay? So count with me. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You don't have to wrap tight. The more you wrap, um, the fuller your pom pom's gonna be, but the harder it's gonna be to tie. So, almost there. All right, so that's about good. So you can see I wrapped up my fingers. I still got space in between them where I'm gonna pass the thread and I'm gonna gather it and I'm gonna tie it. I still got my little tail here. All right, so I'm gonna give it a cut. There's no harm in giving us a lot of extra yarn. It's not gonna hurt anything, okay? Here comes the tricky part, and this may be the part that your kiddos need help with, okay? But we're gonna use these two tails and we're actually gonna gather this in the middle and tie it. And then eventually, this is what we're gonna snip on either side of these loops, it's kind of like a, a butterfly wing, okay? So I like to take the longer tail that I, you know, that I just finished wrapping, and I'm gonna pass it in between my fingers and grab it, okay? I'm gonna show that closer to the camera. You see? So I've wrapped it in between there. I'm gonna go around one more time. This is where that space in between your fingers is really important, otherwise it doesn't work. Pull it nice and tight, okay? It's also really important that you don't break the string doing this. But yarn is pretty, yarn is pretty tough, okay? So we wrap it around a couple times, pull it nice and tight, and then I'm gonna slide it off my fingers. Wrap this one more time, just to be sure. Okay, so I'm gonna slide it, come on off my fingers without turning my fingers blue. <laughs> Did you see them? They were turning blue. Ah. All right, here they come. Come on. I'm trying to get it off so that you can still see it. Can you see what it looks like? Like that, like that little disc. So now I'm gonna give it a tie. So I've got, I've gotta pull it closer to me so I can see. I wish I had like an overhead camera that um, you know, would film me from above. They make that? They make a tripod that, like, is above me, so you guys can see everything that I do. All right, let me give this a good knot, and then I'll show it to the, show it to the camera. Pull it nice and tight. And I'm going to leave things nice and long. Um, I can trim them later if I want to, because... But if I, if I want to just suspend this little pom-pom from someplace, these two little tails are really nice for that. All right, so I'll leave my tails. And then you see all these loops right here? That's what we need to cut in order to make our pom-pom. So all I'm gonna do is slide my scissors into this little disc. And I'm not gonna get them all at the same time. If you have one of these really cool pom-pom makers, um, you actually, you can, you can, it's like, one snip and they all get cut, but I always have to kind of go back and find the loops. Um, and that's okay. Because it doesn't, it doesn't get into all of them on the, on one try, but make sure I get all my loops cut. So you can see it's starting to kind of open it up, kind of fill it out. We're going to give it a haircut too. So, which is actually, I think one of the most fun parts. So you give it a fluff. Fluff, 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 fluff. Open her up, fluff it out. 
and then we're going to give it a haircut. So this is where nice sharp scissors come in handy. We can cut any of them that maybe are a little bit too long and it's not quite rounded. I don't want to cut my, my handle there, but. So that's where you get your little pom-pom tassel that you can, you know, weave into, into your design if you want. Um, you can actually attach it to one of the vertical strings, just tie it on there and then just weave right over the top of it and it'll, it'll stay in there and it'll kind of hide your strings. Um, for the weaving. These are also really fun to make, um, you know, just for, for decoration in your in your bedroom or on a, a table lamp or, or anything else that you'd want. So all these little pom-poms, you can make them all day long. All right. So this is my, this is my fiber arts thing. I'm probably going to keep working on this a little bit and maybe um, get it off the board. Uh, you can also, I mentioned painting the board, but you can paint fabric too. So, um, if you have watercolors or even food coloring, that type of kind of liquidy, watery paint will dye the fabrics without changing the texture of them too much. Um, even like just a washable tempera paint. So if, if maybe you've got fabrics and your kids are not too wild about those colors of the fabrics, go ahead and paint right over the top of them. You can either paint them before you weave them into something or you can paint them afterwards. Um, and and that, that will kind of you know, help you use what you've got without having to buy something new. So. I hope that this is a fun project for you guys. Um, my daughter got um, a loom for Christmas, one of the round ones, and has been making scarves. Honestly, my husband and I have been using it as well. It's been very fun. And um, I know I talked to a couple other kiddos who have come to classes this week, and, and they've also gotten some different kinds of looms. So um, you know, weaving might be something that you see more of in the classes in the future. I've got a lot of kiddos who are interested in it. So and it's such a practical art form, uh, these, these tapestries and these fiber arts. So. If you have questions about this, please send me a message or, or comment below the video and I'll be happy to chat with you about it. Um, tomorrow's video, I'm still deciding what it's going to be. So if you have suggestions on something you want to see, um, you can let me know. Um, it is going to be pre-recorded. It is not going to be live. I'm going to be on the road to our final family Christmas and so I'm going to try to, to head out of town just a little bit sooner than normal. So. Um, so we're going to pre-record tomorrow's art activity for you and we'll post it at 11 o'clock. It will be a video form that I, I still have to rack my brain. So you have about like, you have about two hours if you want to see something to let me know so that I can, <laughs> I can, I can make sure to, to make a video on it. All right. You guys have a wonderful Thursday and uh, I will check with you tomorrow.